So how would you rate your MMA knowledge? How would you rate your knowledge of the UFC? And how would you rate your knowledge of the heavyweights within the UFC compared to a former heavyweight himself? That's the question I've been asking myself the last couple of days. What's my knowledge base like? What is it really like compared to people who have spent their entire life dedicated to the art of combat sports? How does it match up? Well, sometimes I think it's not that bad when I compare it to people like Brendan Schaub. Recently, he went on his podcast, Below the Belt, and somehow declared in one breath, in one sentence, and in one clip that Francis Ngannou had no chance of beating Stipe Miocic in their second fight this weekend. And also that he, he's betting on him due to his um, affiliation or brand deal that he has with DraftKings. Isn't he actually one of the most entertaining sports analysts that exists in the UFC? And isn't it quite baffling that somebody that that was a professional at that highest level in that division has no idea how to analyze fights or has no objectivity or cannot place himself in the feet of other fighters or look at things from a bird's eye point of view why does that continue to happen can somebody tell me why that is the case it's very very bizarre because obviously myself i'm a casual fan i tune into a card here or there i love watching the prelims i think there's a lot of great fights happen there because the ufc roster is stacked with talent but sometimes i watch fights or i hear people analyzing things who are really engrossed in the fights i think to myself why are they so sure of the outcomes that they're talking about when in reality we know when people enter that octagon things change when people are away and they have time to reflect or they're close to being cut or they have to look after their family or they're thinking about the free loss the, the, the free loss streak they're on that they have to kind of regain or they have to maybe kind of support you know their team and they don't want to waste the time of their coaches loads of stuff goes into a fighter turning up to the octagon and doing what he knows how to do best and there are so many intangibles in between so many things that we are unaware of outside of it that really add to the overall scope of how or the overall outcome more so of how the fight is going to end up being or end up being scored at it's just a real real hodgepodge of things that we can only really identify once the step inside the octagon now, all that build up stuff i don't really pay much attention to it because everything only matters once you step inside the octagon itself now, brendan Schaub had a very interesting take of course like i mentioned before he mentioned in one breath that he thinks francis and Ghana has no chance in the second fight against Stipe Miocic and then he also said towards the end that he feels like Francis Ngannou is going to win due to his best that he put forward so let's hear some of Brendan Schaub's analysis and then we can continue on so this narrative of Francis completely different fighter he's so much better yeah how so yeah in which way well, you know, I think mentally he's stronger. He's working on his wrestling and he's a better fighter. Yeah. Which fight proved that? Because the longest fight he's had since the horrible outing of Derek Lewis, which is 15 or was that? Yeah. 15 minutes of complete shit. He's gone. The longest he's gone is a minute 11. Where are you getting your facts from? The odd thing is, haven't we got some evidence of that happening recently now don't get me wrong it's another weight class and it maybe is a whole different ball game overall in terms of the level of experience that these fighters are but two recent examples who happened to fight each other um to varying levels of success was max holloway and brian ortega when max holloway absolutely destroyed brian ortega for what was that five rounds of absolute destruction right where brian ortega ended up looking like the elephant man in the face and he looked like he was completely hopeless when he comes to striking somehow he turned it around went back to the drawing board and when we saw brian when we saw brian ortega back into the octagon he was sand hair bald and striking like an absolute ninja within that time so this is somebody who is a legit black belt in jujitsu somebody who's got pretty good grappling somebody who's i guess a decent wrestler whose striking was below par took time out post fight post loss a very severe loss a, a loss that a lot of fighters say can change you mentally in terms of how you go into fights can change you as a person completely can affect you in the long term and you're not really sure you're not really correct of the or you know, don't even know what the outcomes or the results are going to be later on down the line and he came back into the octagon and looked a completely different fighter. Now that happened. We've seen it happen before. So why can't that happen again? I'm really confused. Is it diff is it more difficult to learn how to strike as it is to opposed to learn how to, you know, um, scramble from a takedown or to prevent a takedown from happening or to have some decent bottom, get it, bottom game, whatever that game is when you're at the bottom and you're not laying still. Is it possible to learn that to a greater level of proficiency than it is striking? I'd imagine so. 
I've only taken a couple of classes on a group one, but the times that I've gone, I've realized how much difficult it is to actually punch a moving object as it is to maybe hold onto one and take it to the ground. It's entirely a whole different thing to do. And I would, I would, go, I would go as far as saying maybe you can't exactly learn to strike to a high level the same way that Israel, Israel Adesanya strikes if you haven't been you know, practicing martial arts from a very young age. It's very difficult to suddenly decide via watching a couple of YouTube clips that you're going to turn into Jean-Claude Van Damme. You have to kind of build up that base, that dexterity, that motion, whatever it is, from a very young age. But I'd imagine you could learn how to defend uh, a takedown. You could manage how to defend yourself when you're on the ground. You could manage to have some semblance of defense when you're facing somebody that is a world-class striker like Stephen Miocic. That is possible, isn't it? Again, it's not likely, but I reckon it is possible. In what sense has he gotten better? In what sense do you think it's going to be a different Francis against Stipe? Well, his wrestling's a lot better as mentality. Oh, yeah? In what way? I'd love to see it. Well, they say in training, ah, it doesn't count. Well, they say, you know, he's at Extreme Couture, he's in Vegas. I don't give a flying fuck how his training's going. I go based off what happens when the lights are on, the camera's on, and fans are watching, and Scrooge McDuck's in cage side, and there's three judges, and there's a referee. I'm going based off that. I'm what an odd human being. He roots for Greg Hardy after bashing him for the best part of, what, months when he first got signed to the UFC based on, obviously, his obvious indiscretions. And now suddenly he's writing off um, Francis Ugano because, what, he doesn't think you can develop into a world-class or a proficient enough wrestler to give yourself a chance to knock somebody's head off from their shoulders? Interesting. I'm going based off real game time. And in real game time, there is no evidence he is any different. If anything, he looked worse his last outing against Rosenstruck. Champion mind. How did he look worse? I guess maybe in terms of striking, yeah. Even as a fan myself, I can say when he's when when um, Francis Ngannou is swinging widely to the fences, when Rosenstruck is basically, I guess he, he went for an inside leg kick. He then stepped back in a straight line. Even I know as a novice that you're not meant to go back in straight lines. And as he's backing up into the cage, Francis is just legitimate. It looks like he's maybe closing his eyes and just swinging from the shoulders, right? Nothing is coming through from the hips, no technique nothing he's just hoping that his fist connects with, with, with Rosenstruck and it does about maybe twice only for all the punches that he did end up throwing he ends up only connecting twice but still he connected and it was night night for Rosenstruck so it's not as if that was his fault right it's just the matter of the game and what it is if he's able to avoid some of the early takedowns from Miocic when he maybe swings and Miocic ducks and goes for a double or a single leg he might have a chance to say that he can't have a chance or that nothing's going to change and he has developed any base of his wrestling is insane now now the pro the interesting thing would be is Francis Ngannou similar to Deontay Wilder? In like Deontay Wilder, there's no way Deontay Wilder just punches the heavy bag and you know tries to go for a knock knockout whenever he's sparring with people in the ring. I'm pretty sure he does go in a bit more educated. He uses his jab. He kind of does his bit of boxing fundamentals. But for whatever reason, whenever Booker Deontay Wilder goes into the actual ring, he's always looking to knock somebody out because obviously he has that God-given freakishly uh, ability to knock people out with one punch. That is correct. Now, if Ron Cigano, is he the same way? Does he show great levels of wrestling acumen and grappling acumen when he's in the training and when he's in camp? But if for some reason when he gets inside the octagon under the bright lights, he changes as a fighter? We don't know. But for sure, there's definitely an option for that to change. Mindset and that champion's heart will beat Francis 100 out of 100 times. Because when the going gets tough, my money's on Steve Bay. I'm just not willing to jump on the Francis train saying he's this completely different fighter and his wrestling's better and his mindset's better. I don't fucking know, and neither do you guys. So that narrative does not work for me. Because we, he, you're telling me the technique he used in the Rosenstruck fight proved that he's gotten better? That's, a, that's, that's the last hard evidence we have. What, what, what do I would do love that, to, for understand. anybody that says Francis is a completely changed fighter to watch that fight and say he's better. Because to me, he's worse. And also, isn't there a lot to be said for maybe the fault of Dana not allowing Francis and Garner to fight during this entire time? Why hasn't he been fighting more regularly? Why has he been so inactive this entire time? Has he just been sitting there idly waiting for the Stipe Miocic fight? 
I'm not exactly sure what the what the re reason is, but it's definitely something to be said for him not being so active and not maybe showing his level of ex you know maybe his level of training he's been doing in the camp between that time. Now we know what Stipe is going to offer. We know that Stipe has improved as a fight. We've seen Stipe over three fights with DC that he's improved each and every fight, every element of it. He does. He's probably the most well-rounded heavyweight in that sense, right? Decent boxing, decent Muay Thai and kicks and striking, whatnot, and of course world-class grappling and wrestling he even took down dc for fuck's sake do you know what i mean now is that just a case he doesn't respect rosenstruck and was just like fuck this dude i'm gonna throw caution the wind and knock this dude out i'll trade one for one maybe just a lack of respect so we didn't see much from it but that's all we have man and i'm not willing to bet on that and look a few <laughs> moments later there's plenty to bet on at DraftKings sportsbook the official sports betting partner of the UFC. It's putting you right in the center of the action with a special odds boost for all the below the belt listeners. Here's my picks for this week. All right. You got Luke, Sean O'Malley and Francis Ngannou to win their fights. What? So right now, if you head to the app, find the Brendan shops picks under the odds boost tab. doesn't matter if you're new or existing customer bet on it. So all three Francis, Sean O'Malley and Vicente Luque have to win their fights in order for you to win your money, but they boost the odds, all right? What? But he does end up doing this quite often, right? He'll say one thing on the show, and then whatever pick, whenever if ever it goes the opposite way, he'll just say, oh, that's what he texts his friend in private, but he didn't want to say on the show because he didn't want to hurt anyone's feelings. It's like, huh? Then just don't pick fights, innit? it? There's plenty of other MMA analysts do the same thing. They analyze fights, but they don't pick any winners. It's pretty easy to do. It's a fairly odd take to have, I think, in general. Now, don't get me wrong. Most likely, Stipe will probably end up winning. He has maybe a greater arsenal of weapons that he can draw from. And from what we've seen so far, at the highest echelons of UFC, you have to have some level of grappling, some level of jiu-jitsu, some level of wrestling in order for you to sustain a long unbeaten run, to, for you to hold onto the belt. It just is mandatory. At that level, you just can't get away with just fighting the way you want to fight. People are going to come in, disturb your party, make it messy for you, um, throw you off your rhythm, take you to the deep waters and see if you can swim. But obviously, we're talking about a freak here in Francis Ngannou, somebody who legitimately can take your head off your shoulders take your head off your shoulders ox alistair over him he knows that thing actually happened and if he's able to connect a few times with um super Miocic, no matter how great his chin is no matter how solid his head is and no matter how resilient he is there's only so many of those punches a one man can take and of course his champion has his rest on his laurels is he getting a little bit complacent because the first fight was so one-sided when he decided to take it down to wrestling who knows but there's definitely more reasons why it could be possible that francis can win as opposed to what brendan shaw is talking about and also why does he wear all these different jerseys from different teams so often is that a thing is that something that's normal in america do, do people support like 10 or follow 10 baseball teams at one in one given time because what one of your friends lived there or you went to college there or when you ex off like what is that all about is that normal i'd love to know from my american colleagues out there he's wearing at the moment was it's a cubs shirt right like what is that all about is that normal do you support more than one team or is it just maybe something only specific to somebody like him who's a fan of just sports in general like that who was that one guy who wore the baseball cap that said nfl is it that kind of thing right where well, you don't want to claim any team because you don't want to be held to um account if they end up losing or something what is that all about let me know in the comments down below and if you enjoyed this video of course make sure you click subscribe and leave me a like that'll be greatly appreciated